appreciate this opportunity to minister. I appreciate this. I want to thank Brother Luke for having me, and I want to bless you all for the offer. Thank you for the offer, and bless you all a hundred thousand fold. Yeah. I've been debating which song to sing. I'm between two, but I think I'm going to sing the song I wrote. I understand singing an E when God answers prayer for you. Yeah. I was between two, but I think I'll sing the one I wrote because I know it by heart a little better. Yeah. When God answers prayer for you, when God answers prayer for you, He will open up all heaven yeah. and pour God answers prayer for you. Oh, Christian who's in desperate need. Oh, Christian who's in desperate need. God will hear, will hear your prayer when God answers prayer for you. When God answers prayer for you. giving me that song during a trying time back around 2017. I'm thankful he gave me that song. So, you know, I similar tune to another song I wrote, but I made a decision to stop singing that other one. Yeah. Once in a great while, I'll slip and sing it. <laughs> but as a rule, I don't. Uh, but anyway, I'm thankful to be here tonight and thankful for this Time of old time way of salvation. I uh, gonna read from two portions of scriptures. I've been thinking today, being I don't know why he preached this morning. I never asked. He preached uh, for this particular day, you know, September 11, 2022, the 21st anniversary, and I may not be per se preaching along that line, but brother, I am going to tell at least one story involving it. Yeah. So I'm uh, kind of fired up. Got your Bibles. I'm going to first read from the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 22, and then we're going to go to Mark, chapter 16. First off, let's go to Jude, chapter 1, verse 22. I should have said chapter 3 and see what how many would say they had. No, there's only... One chapter. To some, some have compassion, making a difference. Yeah. 
Others say with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments by the, by the flesh. Others say with fear, and we'll read again, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. He said to them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Every creature he who believes is baptized shall be saved. He who believes not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. My name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. They drink any day thing and shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Yeah. <clears throat> Tile my message. The job we have to do. All right. All right. The job we have to do. Let's Amen. pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, for this night. I thank you, Father, for this time. God, I ask you to anoint my lips of clay. Help us remind, remind each and every one of us the job that you've called each one of us to do. Oh, yeah. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes. <clears throat> There's a lot of amazing stories that came out of September 11, 2001. Yeah. A horrible day in history. I haven't forgot it. I was at the, the Weston Company uh, working that morning when my boss, Bob Hansen, told me the plane had smashed into one of the Twin Towers. Then later on, I heard the second one. Yeah. It was nightmarish. Yeah. It was nightmarish. Yeah. A lot of stories come out how people miraculously survived. Yeah. People who got born again that day. Yeah. And some sad but true stories. Maybe the person didn't die saved, but at least they had an act of heroics. Yeah. And I'm thinking of one fireman in particular I read about. I don't have his name before me, but and I know some dispute this claim, but I think I'm with the claim. They say and this man was a highly decorated fireman. When he first came back from Vietnam, they said that he was a man full of adrenaline and had a chip on his shoulder. Yeah. That's what type of guy he was. All right. Sort of a rough guy. And they said there was only one type of job he could hold. That was that of a fireman. And yes, he was a brave fireman. Yeah. There was a lot of brave firemen, highly decorated men who gave their lives for others that day and he yeah. was one of them they say as he was getting ready to go into the building I forget which tower it was really it don't matter one of his comrades said listen don't go up that tower don't go up that tower don't go up that tower no he didn't say it three times I'm just doing it because of the, my emphasis you know what the man said he says, sir, don't you see? I've got a job to do. All right. You know what he did? He went up into that tower. And yeah. of course, we know what happened. He died that day. Yeah. Amen. I died a heroic death. Yeah. And you know what I believe? I believe we as Christians ought to have that dedication to our job. Right. Amen. First off, I do believe we should be dedicated to our earthly job. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Whatever we do, do heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Yeah. <clears throat> but that's not the job I'm dealing with today. Right. I'm dealing with a job as soul winners, as yeah. active witnesses. I believe we as Christians need to be active witnesses. As it yeah. says here, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Yeah. Yeah. That is not just for the original disciples. That's for each and every one of us. Amen. <laughs> I believe tonight that's the job for every Christian Amen. is to go into the highways and the byways and yeah. to compel them to come in. Amen. As it says in Luke 14, I believe the reason we get, and I may be getting ahead of myself, but I think that's okay. Why are we baptized in the Holy Ghost? 
Yes, the physical initial sign evidence is speaking in tongues. <coughs> As it says in Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. Yeah. Acts chapter 10, 44 to 48. Acts chapter 19, 1 through 7. In the mouth of two or three witnesses. <coughs> Let every word be established. All right. I believe right there's three witnesses yeah. that when you get the Holy Ghost, you will speak in tongues. I know people are trying to refute it. Amen. But I'll tell you what, they've come past the day and age of refuting it for me because I'm dogmatic. I'm convinced and they cannot change me because I believe three times yeah. it explicitly said they spake in other tongues yeah. as the spirit of God gave them utterance. So it, I don't know what you think. Also had Paul's testimony. He was received the Holy Ghost. Later on, 1 Corinthians 14, when he said, I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than y'all. Yeah. Acts chapter 8, pardon me, I'm getting off the message. Oh, I don't think I am. Acts chapter 8. Simon saw when they got the Holy Ghost. Amen. What did Simon see? Well, you know what the logical conclusion is? You interpret scriptures with scriptures. Yeah. Yeah. You know what you do? Acts chapter 2, they spake in tongues. Acts chapter 10, they spake in tongues. Acts chapter 19, they spake in tongues. Acts chapter 9, with Acts 1 Corinthians chapter 14, I think it's verse 22. If I got the wrong verse, sorry about that, but I know... He said, I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than y'all. Yeah. Tells me he spake in tongues. Some people try to say, oh, he's dealing with foreign languages. No, he's dealing with the supernatural gift of the Holy Ghost. All right. That's why he was dealing with that. 1 Corinthians 14, was it? All right. As well as 12 and 13. All right. Yeah. He wasn't dealing with all the languages he knew, though he knew several. But he also spake in tongues when the Spirit of God gave him the utterance. Yeah. So you know what you do? You interpret Scripture with Scripture, do you not? Amen. So you know what happened with how Simon knew they got the Holy Ghost? He saw men and women speaking in tongues. All right. All right. That is logical. In fact, I think that is theological. All right. Come on. Yeah. It's common sense. So let's stick with what the Bible says. Amen. Amen. Not the doctrines and opinions of men. Okay. I'm on the, I, now back to my thoughts. Why are we receive the Holy Ghost? So we can be witnesses. Right. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Yeah. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria. And unto the most parts of the earth. The reason we receive the Holy Ghost is so we can have power to go into the highways and hedges yeah. and compel them to come in. So we can give out tracts to men and women yeah. who need to hear the gospel. So we can go up to people and as the Spirit guides us, witness to them. Yeah. I'm telling you tonight, that's why part of our job, that's one of the main equipments. We need the Holy Ghost. If you haven't got the Holy Ghost tonight, let me tell you something. If you're born again, if you're living right, I believe it's for you. Amen. It's for you and your children and even as me as the Lord our God shall call. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So tonight, uh, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, it's time to seek God for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 I don't know. I feel led to actually say that encourage people tonight yeah. when I give the altar call. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, come receive it. Amen. Yeah. I'll say this and they'll get on. I've been often amazed how these people have been in our ranks for years, Pentecostal circles, and they seek the Holy Ghost. It seems like they have a hard time getting it. Yeah. Then there was a guy like me who was just plumb, dumb, and ignorant, didn't know much about the things of God. Wasn't I totally dumb? I was in college then. But when they told me to seek God for the Holy Ghost, guess what happened? The very first time I saw it, guess what happened to me? I got it. Yeah. Amen. I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But I want to challenge those who have been serving God for years and been in the, in the Pentecostal circles for years. Don't let that stop you. You need to come forward and believe God for that. Amen. You need the Holy Ghost to be an effective witness 
tonight. Anyway, this job is the job we have to do. Amen. Reaching out to the Lord. You know, all of us, if you could be honest, we're witness to somebody some along we're along the line. All right. I can think of several people who used to witness to me. I'll never forget my senior year in high school. This guy came from uh, Parsons, West Virginia, in Tucker County, to Elkins High and Randolph County every day. And you know what I believe? I believe God sent Curtis for one reason. All right. He may say it was this and that. He's passed away since then anyway. But I'll tell you what I believe. I believe God sent him to Elkins High. All right. I believe God sent him there for one reason. I believe main reason just to reach out to others, but there was one man in particular that God had his hand on and was wanting him to reach. No, I didn't get saved underneath the late Curtis Haller, but I'll tell you what, he did influence me. He right. did leave a, an active witness of, about me, and he did cause me to think about being saved quite right. a few times after that. I can name some others. While I was in Davis and Elkins College, a lady came to me one morning. And she said, I'm a tutor. If you need any help with your lessons, I'm here to help you. And well, here goes. Of all subjects, it dealt with a, whether snake handling's constitutionally protected or not. <laughs> I'm not going to deal with that. You can deal with it, right, brother? And I'll tell you where I stand. I don't believe in snake handling. <coughs> I preach against it. Acts chapter 28 gives the example. When Paul accidentally got bit. So it has nothing to do with you going to a church and grabbing a snake. It has plenty to do with the power of God falling on you when a snake comes against you or you're bit by one. <clears throat> accidentally yeah. I'll tell you what I've handled snakes with, with shovels yeah. hoes yeah. come on yeah. I've used shovels and hoes on them and killed them dead yeah. never forget when I was working for Jerry Mills this one guy said Chip whenever I leave uh, let this bucket up I want you to be ready for your shovel and I was because when he let it up there it was a copperhead well. Lord help me take care of that one <laughs> with a shovel I sure didn't uh, pick it up with my hands. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But I'll tell you what. It's not dealing with what they do in those worship services in states like Kentucky and West Virginia. Yeah. I understand there's even a few in Virginia even. Yeah. Used to be. I don't know. Uh, but anyway. Tonight. That was an open opportunity, was it not? All right. Like I say, we will go with what we talked about or all that. But I finally led to me actually telling her, you know, I was talking about, you know, there's people been witness to me a lot. I forget exactly how I put it. And guess what? All right. One more witness. All right. Yeah. That lady witnessed to me once again. Yeah. Amen. But finally one Monday morning, I was in the William James House program. Really, that's a secular humanistic program. All right. Teaching us how to read better, which I appreciate. I wish I could remember all that. I also dealt with values. And they asked us this question one Monday afternoon. What would you do if you only had three days left to live? Yeah. Well, I forget what some of the other people said, but I remember what I said, not word for word. I said I'd get my heart with God, right with God because I knew where I was heading if I didn't. That's yeah. basically what I said. I said I'd get I'd pray to God and ask him to forgive me of my sins. Yes. Yeah. This lady after the service after it was over asked me, Chip, is that something you value already? I said, No joy. No joy. Mama Joy Walker. I still call her on Mother's Day. Well. Come on. Yeah. You know what happened? She said, when's your next uh, study period? I said, Wednesday. She said, can you come by? I said, sure, sure. Guess what? I didn't know what it was going to be about. But she started witnessing to me. All right. That was one Wednesday. The following Wednesday. I forget when Thanksgiving was. I know I missed one Wednesday because I wasn't about to go there. 
I know there was a third Wednesday and finally she told me, Chip, can you come by this Thursday? I finally got the dates figured out. It was December 7th, Pearl Harbor Day. I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. I'm telling you something tonight. I believe we need to be witnesses. We need to shine our lights both through our lives and yes, through word and yes, through gospel literature. Yeah. I believe it's time we go into the highways and byways and compel them to come in. I believe that is our job. And I believe we need to take our job more serious. All right. Why? Number one, I already basically covered it. Our own personal life. Yeah. Like I said, I think most of us were witnessed by somebody. Yeah. Most of us were. Maybe they didn't get in our face, but maybe they just handed us a gospel track. Maybe they just invited us to a special church service or to a regular church service. Does it really matter whether it was a regular service or a revival or a fellowship meeting? No. All right. But you were invited out. Yeah. yeah. And you came. Yeah. And you heard the gospel. Amen. Maybe you didn't get saved that night. I don't know how many times I heard the gospel before I finally got saved. But thank God I finally gave my life to the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Thanks to the witness of several people. Amen. Tonight, because of our own personal testimony. Number two, the fearful consequence. Yeah. In Ezekiel chapter 3, 15 through 21. And again, Ezekiel 20, I mean 33, it deals with that we're called to be watchmen. Yeah. And if we fail to warn the wicked to turn from their wicked way and they die in their iniquity, their blood will be upon our hands. Right. <coughs> if we warn them and they don't get right, the blood will be upon them. Yeah. <coughs> but if we warn them not, we will be responsible for that soul. All right. I remember hearing a certain guy graduate from Free Gospel Bible Institute tell how one night there was a black man from Africa there <coughs> at the school. They said he was out in the cornfield. I don't know, did they have it back when you was there out in the field? Well, it doesn't matter. He was out there praying one night. Some people got concerned. They saw him laying there. They didn't really have anything to be concerned about. It was a little cold. They brought him in. They thought he was sick. They took him into the prayer room. No, he was just slain out under the power of God. All right. Next thing you know, he came to, he came to with the words, blood, blood, blood. What happened? The Lord revealed to him that several people's blood was upon his hands. Tonight, I don't want blood to be upon my hands. No, no. Amen. I don't want that to be haunting right. me both now and the eternity. Oh. Amen. It does. Amen. Some of the people I failed to warn. But I'll tell you something else. When you warn them, you don't have to worry about that. All right. You need to be thankful. You gave every opportunity. Years ago, how many people? I'm getting ahead of myself. But tonight, the awesome responsibility is a job which has a heavy responsibility with yeah. We don't want people to die lost. No. And then for the second, third reason, the reality of hell. Yeah. A lot of preachers don't preach on hell anymore. Well, count me out. I'm one that do, does. Yeah. I believe it's right there, and I believe we need to preach on it. Amen. Tonight, if you see a house burning right now, what would you try to do? You try your best to call the fire department. You may even try going in to make sure nobody's hurt. Years ago, back around 1893, pardon me for telling an old story that's still relevant for 2022. All right. There was a cowboy preacher from Texas. He went to a seminary out in Louisville, Kentucky. There was, a, there was an old rickety apartment on fire. This one lady ran up to the people and said, My child's up there. Can somebody go up and reach my child? Yeah. 
I think they could even hear his screams throughout the flames. That cowboy preacher said, just wet some towels down, put them around me, and I'll go up and get them. He climbed that ladder up. He ran to where the child was, grabbed that child, rescued that child, and he went and he put his legs around the ladders and slid down with that child to safety. Amen. I tell you what, that we, we think I believe that was a great story for him saving that young child's life. Yeah. By the way, now for the rest of the story, who the man was, it was none other than Bill Rice, uh, the father of the late Dr. John R. Rice. If you knew what year Dr. Rice was born, you would know that he had to survive it. 1893, 1895 was the year he was born. Oh. He saved that child's life. Yeah. That person we may rescue Amen. may very well be a child that needs to be saved. Amen. And I'll tell you one other thing. I had this point four. I never even thought of it. Did you know when you reach somebody for the Lord, you'll know what's going to happen with that person? Yeah, right. What do you mean? Ananias was told that night yeah. that he was a witness to Saul of Tarsus. <clears throat> he bucked that, did he not? Yeah. He was afraid of that man. Right. And rightfully so. I can understand. Yeah. Because he had a very bad reputation killing Christians, having them put to death and tortured. Yeah. Yeah. But can I tell you something? God told him he was one of his chosen vessels. Right. God may not always tell you that that person you're talking to is one of his chosen vessels. Yeah. But you never know that person you witnessed to tonight that drunkard on the streets of Ashdown yeah. might be one of these days an evangelist within this church. All right. That lady who's a wicked woman, morals of an alley cat. Yeah. She might be a future pastor's wife. Yeah. Yeah. We do not know right. what's going to happen to those people who we witness to. I'm going to tell you something. I even asked Joy. <laughs> if she ever felt God tell her that I, I was called, she said no. But she witnessed to me anyway, not knowing <clears throat> I was called to preach. Yeah. I didn't even know I was called to preach. Yeah. I'm glad God didn't tell me till later on after I got saved. Because yeah. I would have probably bucked that if He had told me before. Yeah. But God called me. Little did I realize what God was going to do through me. Little did Mama Joy know what she that I was going to wind up being a preacher. Amen. I tell you tonight, that person that you may not want to witness to because of how mean they are, that could be somebody ready that if they get saved, might go to the mission field. They might be somebody God will use to bring revival to this nation. Yeah. So don't buck at that person because how hateful and ugly and they are in spirit. All right. Because that person could easily be a chosen vessel. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I'll tell you something else. I dealt with the dangers of not reaching. I will tell you what the, danger, what the blessings are. We will have a soul winner's crown. Amen. Amen. We will have a reward in heaven. I know as long as you do it for the right motive, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Let me explain to you something. I have done the right thing, but for the wrong motive. Yeah. Yeah. I won't go into the story, but one time, one time in particular, I can honestly say I did the right thing, but it was completely for the wrong motive. But thank God, God used that just the same and averted a split. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Amen. If, if nobody knows what I'm talking about, the better, but he might. But that's okay. But tonight, I'm going to do the right thing. And on my way, I'm going to start praying, God, now let me do it for the right motive. Amen. Because let me tell you something. 
You're not going to get that reward. Yeah. As it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, there's six things that said you get rewarded. You either get, get gold, silver, or precious stones, as if you've done it because you love God and love the souls of men. Amen? All right. But if you do it just to uh, impress Susie Q, yeah. or if you do it just to, you know, so people in the church can just boast on what a great soul winner you are, right. you'll get wood, hay, and stubble. Yeah. But you know what? If you do it for the wrong move, I ain't going to tell you to quit doing the witnessing. Just pray through, get the right move, and get out there and get on more fire with God than you ever have. Amen. Have that great soul winner zeal. Yeah. One preacher I heard one time, the Lord dealt with him, show him how most of his zeal, religious zeal was for the wrong motives. You know what he did? He prayed through and got his bows right, and they said after he got done praying, God used him more greatly than he ever did before. Wow. Yeah. So I believe if you're doing the right witnessing or whatever for the wrong motive, get prayed through and watch how God's going to greatly use you even the more. Amen. So tonight, there's great rewards <coughs> for us. And one more thing, it shows our love for the Lord. What do you mean? If you love me, keep my commandments. Right. This is not something optional. This is a command. Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. No, he may not call you to ever go outside this country. Right. He may never go outside this area. Yeah. That's between you and God how far you go. But I can tell you one thing. God can use you wherever he puts you. Yeah. <clears throat> and it is the commandment to be a witness. It's the reason we need the Holy Ghost, as I said earlier. So tonight, if you really love the Lord, you'll try to reach out to souls. Amen. You may not reach every soul you try to reach out for. I'm sad to say there's many people I've tried to reach out to I believe we're already in hell. Yeah. But you know what? I'm not going to stop it. Right. you got to keep going on. Amen. Just because you never heard about that person getting saved doesn't mean it didn't happen. Right. I heard about a man for years was an active witness and he never knew about a single soul he got saved. Until one day there was a special meeting. This missionary got up and told how he got saved through the faithful witness of a certain man that would hand out tracts on the streets. Yeah. And then somebody said, you know, that was the same man that got me saved. Wow. <clears throat> and then it turned out there were several pastors in that same convention that got saved through that faithful witness of that same man. Wow. That man never even knew it. That man was up in years now, a lot long for this world. You know what they did? Some of them came by where he lived, knocked on his door, and they thanked him for leading him them to the Lord. Yeah. You know what? He never knew he won a single one of them. And here he won several missionaries, several preachers, I think some pastors' wives, Sunday school teachers, deacons, <clears throat> faithful church members. Yeah, yeah. Does it really matter whether they're a preacher or not? Sometimes that faithful church member can do more than the preacher can. Yeah. I believe that. Right. So tonight, be faithful. Maybe you, God wants you to go on the streets and preach. I've done it. Amen. I tell you my favorite state to street preach in, Florida. <clears throat> if you can't street preach in Florida, I promise you, you can't street preach in any other place. That is actually, yes, Sister Emily, that is the easiest place I found to street preach at. The state of Florida. I may add specifically LaBelle. Come on. Because I've been in, on it in Virginia. <coughs> it's not as easy in Virginia as it is in Florida. But just the same, 
If God's called you to street preach, <coughs> pardon me, go out and street preach. Yeah. He's called you just to hand out tracts. Go out and head out tracts. He just wants you to give your testimony to somebody. And people, as they come along, be ready to give your testimony. Amen. I'll tell you something. I'm not going to tell you what to do. That's between you and the Lord. Amen? Yeah. But do something. Yes. You may not be able to win everybody to the Lord. But there's some people you may be able to win that Brother Luke could never win. Right. There's some people you may be able to win that I could never win. Yeah. So tonight, be faithful. Be committed to this job. Amen. Don't let the critics stop you. Amen. If you have to risk your life, don't let the critics stop you. That one fireman gave his life. I hope he got some people, rescued some people before he died. Yeah. If he rescued one person from that building, it would have been worth his death, wouldn't it? I just hope he was ready to meet the Lord. That's all I'll say, and I'll drop it there. But tonight, let's be found faithful. Amen. Let's be found faithful. Yes, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every Amen. creature. Yes. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. He who believes not shall be damned. Do we want signs to follow? Yeah. I believe the best way to do is to go out, go ye first, and then let the signs follow you as you need it. Amen. You may not need to lay hands on a sick if that person's not sick. But if you go to a hospital, that person you pray for gets healed and gets saved. Amen. They have been worth it. Yeah. Tonight, let's be faithful in this job. We have to do one more thing. I will can you come play one more thing? I don't know all the people here. So tonight, I don't know who's saved here and who's not. I know some who are saved. Or some of you, I don't know. I hope you all are. Yeah. But tonight, if there's somebody here that's not saved, I preach mainly to the church. But when I preach about trying to, for us to be out there, be a witness... I like to be a, give an altar call for the lost. Yeah. Because you never know who might be lost. And I want to do that job that I think we're all called to do. So tonight, if there's any people here that's not saved, please feel free to come. Yeah. Anybody? Anybody backslidden? All right. Maybe you know you've grown cold on the Lord. Tonight, let this be your night. Yeah. I'm basically going to give a general order call for the church. If tonight, if you don't, know, if you are saved, to commit yourself once again to be a witness. Yeah. I think I'm going to while I'm here. Because yeah. I want to do more to reach souls. Yeah. I carry a bunch of articles. Most of these I wrote with opportunities to give them out. Yeah. And I'm also like to start giving out more chick tracks yeah. and tracks of that nature. Amen. I love chick tracks. As they say, chick tracks get red. Yeah. They get red like none others. Yeah. Amen. But tonight, let's commit ourselves to being faithful witnesses. Amen. God bless you. Let's all come.